Brian, good morning guys. How you doing? Chris Rod, Sun City Lawn Care. Today we are going to be doing a couple different videos. <laughs> and the first one I'm going to be doing right now is just a run through of our garden, our food forest that if you guys have been following the channel, something I built on the side of the house, but I wanted to walk through with the growth of our trees that we planted. And we got some of our artichokes down there as well. Uh, wow, where can I start? Let's see. Well, if you guys date back, we planted these trees. Oh God, I want to say April time period. And I bought them as bare root trees and they're really coming through. We've got our uh, pear and our plum trees over there. And let's go to the side of the house where I created my food forest. And let me show you guys what's growing, what's not growing. <laughs> Uh, hope you guys are having a great weekend, but uh, I just got through watering today and a little bit of water here and there. We got our Williams Pride apple tree. We've got our cherry tree. This was just a whip. No leaves, just plain old whip, and it's got some phenomenal growth on it. Now, here's what's not growing. My freaking peach tree. Uh, this came out with a couple scaffolding branches when I got it. Same thing, bare root tree, but no leaf tissue. So I've got hopes we're gonna let it do its thing. And let's give you a glimpse of the area. Look at that. Tomatoes. <laughs> we had to start over with our tomatoes. I did an interesting, uh, when, I, when I transplanted them, because we started them from seeds inside, I had added the bone mill, blood mill, some Epsom salt, and I did a little mycorrhiza fungi to the actual um, transplant itself before putting it in the ground. And it smoked the tomato plants, it smoked them dead. So we, I replanted a couple seeds in there. Uh, one or two of them actually survived. The golden cherries, uh, those, I, I, golden cherry, golden nuggets. What did I plant over here? I forget. Yeah, those are the golden nugget uh, bush variety. Those are determinate on the far side. And you can see I've got some tomatoes, actually. Little guys growing in here. Where are you at? Saw one or two. Oh, I don't remember where they're at. There was one or two that I saw yesterday when I was watering, but those probably lasted the longest. And then we had some purple basil growing in there as well that we transplanted some uh, dark purple opal basil great combination to a tomato area where you're doing your tomato plants but the rest are indeterminate as you guys see i'm going to be trellising it up and last year our indeterminate tomatoes got so freaking tall i ended up having to top them off and i didn't want to do that so we got we're gonna have a late harvest this year with tomatoes but either way trees are coming in they're doing their thing not no high expectations there we just want good root growth this year first year as you guys can see we did a three by eight corn corn raised bed there that's doing good um i just got through fertilizing for the last time it's uh early, or late spring because we're about to hit our summer we're not officially summertime but late spring uh the corn when you guys are planting your corn the last fertilizer application you want to get in is when it's knee high that's the rule of thumb so this is almost in my freaking waist, but you gotta remember this is a raised bed. So if I stood up, it would be about knee high. Uh, what fertilizer did I use? I've actually used just blood mill on this. I'm sorry, not blood mill. Uh, dang, bone mill. Hold on one second. Now, yeah, it is blood mill. Blood mill, it's cause I normally don't, I'm like two, three years in the gardening. I get my blood and my bone mills mixed up. The blood mill, okay, that's like a 1400. Uh, or it might be a 1200, but pure nitrogen on that. I have seen gardeners use 2100 and 4100 when they're doing their knee high um, fertility for corn. That really pushes that growth. You got to remember, corn's like a grass. It is a grass. It's not like a grass, it is a grass. Um, a grassy vegetable. And if you look at it, it looks like, I mean, there's every similarity about this corn that looks like grass blades and I love it. It looks great. Um, I got two varieties here. We've got the double standard on this side and then I've got sweet corn on this side. This double standard's not edible, okay? That's more for like your, your grinding type corns and whatnot, but 
it says that that corn can get almost nine feet tall. So I'm really excited about seeing that transpire. Moving on to the next bed, guys. We've got, I'm a fan of okra. And if you'll zoom in here, let me see if I can get you. Ooh, there's one right, right here, already coming through. And uh, the rest of these are okra plants. And as you guys can see, we've got our, I got two varieties of cucumbers that are gonna trellis up. Check out that guy right there. First time grower of eggplant. I've never grown eggplant, but we're gonna give it a shot. Got a couple different varieties there. Three different plants. Um, we got the Rosita, the eggplant diamond, and oh, I forgot the real, that big one, that's the real black uh, eggplants. And then we got some Chinese five color pepper plants here. More cucumbers, pickles. Last year, I had a phenomenal harvest of uh, pickles and we ended up canning about six jars, I think it was. And for us, that's more than enough. And as a matter of fact, I still have three cans, three jars of pickles inside my cabinet and I haven't had to buy pickles. The kids, the daughters, they love pickles. So we tried a couple different recipes and you know, I think it's an acquired taste when you're getting some of those recipes offline, but they're definitely not store-bought pickles and they taste great on this side right here we've got our our jubilee watermelon that's already sprouting out on the far side i've got a couple more of the pumpkins these particular pumpkin seeds that i sowed on this side were from a pumpkin uh, that we actually bought at albertson's last year so we saved the seeds i got way too many <laughs> and so I'm gonna have a pumpkin patch trellis along the rock wall all the way down, see how far it goes. Maybe get, there's there's four plants growing there. I'm hoping to get at least one or two pumpkins per plant, which would be great. And then this entire bed right here, guys, all peppers. We're in El Paso, West Texas. We love our jalapenos. We love our peppers. Uh, this is my original bed that I first started off with two years ago. We just got through harvesting the garlic and the onion, and I'll show you guys that right now. But we got a little bit of watermelon in there, and then I planted four squash, summer squash in there too. So we're gonna stand by for that one and watch that turn out as the season goes by. But if you look at it, I might be able to get a before and after picture in here if I can edit this properly, but just a transformation. That used to be all rock. And now we're growing food. It's my onion harvest from yesterday. And this is a quick, let me start over here real quick before I end up in the flower bed. And I just wanted to show you guys, give you an update because I haven't done a gardening video in quite some time, but that's the garden in the front or the side of the property. I've got a two lemon trees that we're gonna maintain height. We're not gonna let these get all crazy. I've got my pomegranate, it's down there. It's a little pomegranate tree that they sent me about six inches tall when I bought the bare root trees in the front. I was a little disappointed in the size of the pomegranate tree because I wanted to really kick things started, but either way, we'll let it grow. If I have to replace it, I have to replace it. Pumpkin patch, freaking, we're gonna have a lot of pumpkins, okay? This is probably overkill, but <laughs> last year when I did the pumpkins, I think I did four and to survive we didn't even get pumpkins last year which was depressing not depressing but it is disappointing i should say um chinese cabbage is still growing our other leafy greens were triple digits they already went to bolt and uh i'm not expecting much from that but no big deal we harvested i got plenty of lettuce as it is inside the fridge um flower bed okay so what i did is i took the garden that we started off with two years ago and I transformed it or I actually I moved the garden to the side of the house as you as you can see because what I was wanting to do was turn this into a full flower bed back here and I've got everything from um, artichokes again look at this we've already harvested our artichokes that we wanted to eat so right now the rest I'm just using as an ornamental and letting it go to flower but we've got everything from boars, African daisies, pansies, um, bachelor blue boys, lilies, the strawberry gumfries. Check these out. These things are amazing. Look at that red color. We dig those in place of strawberries that we don't actually have, so it works out. But lots of color, guys. Flowers, flowers, flowers. 
our poppies we had some california and some ice and poppies in the heat of the summer they've already started to die back and then we get i've got a uh plenty of mint mint's growing like crazy it's everywhere and if you look in close here you'll see one of these artichokes look at how gorgeous that looks going to flower and we let it go to flower because what we're looking for are those pollinators besides our sunflowers we want plenty of pollinators and then um i had three extra determinate straw or determinate tomato plants i didn't have any space for them in the front because i'm trying to grow all indeterminate in that area so what we ended up doing is we moved the three right here they've already started producing flowers and they do have tomatoes on them little cherry tomatoes little red cherry tomatoes i forgot the name of them i had the tag around here somewhere uh chadwick chadwick cherry tomatoes so they're in there there's a lot going on this is a very very busy garden uh and i say busy because we're growing mint artichoke tomatoes this right here that is rye grass some seedling that flew in it from when i overseeded the, the lawn uh in the winter and this stuff's already gone to seed which we're going to be taking care of today in a follow-up video for lawn care which stay tuned some lilies and in the back row here be the sunflower it's massive massive that's going to be like 15 feet tall at least but in the back here what we do have guys all along the wall and if you're asking yourself what those wooden stakes are for that is all of our asparagus plants uh i did bare roots in the soil and we're letting them go to fern this year this is year two for them and uh we'll let them go to fern die back cut them back in the fall time and then you know we'll get the regrowth next season but more gum freeze. and then right here this little guy which i still need to transplant but this is my goji berry plant we had that growing inside for quite some time and uh it died back it got too leggy so it died back so i brought it outside potted it and it grew back thankfully but that's it guys that's a quick garden tour garden update if you will if you have any questions let me know and I'll keep you posted on all the different colors. We still have plenty of flowers that have not bloomed.